Okay, this is today's work. Re-angled the front lights, side camping light, underneath light right on the back bumper, and one pointing right back here, the knob <laughs> update video uh, we're getting ready for going on the camp next weekend so just getting the vehicle ready I fitted the night heater last weekend and also upgraded the plumbing and some little pimp lights as you can see just for on a night why not uh, so we're just gonna be upgrading because it's gonna be dark middle of the winter in the woods I've got there some some of these ones these are gonna be work lights and also reverse lights for the rear and for the sides, I'm going to put these ones on the sides, so I'll have 360 light all the way around. So we're going to be fitting them, but first it's dinner time, so let's cook some snap and crack on. Here's a, here's a quick little idea, squeezy ketchup bottles, put some cooking oil in here. I usually keep it in the, uh, the metal little camping canisters, so when they're rattling about they don't get hit or anything, but like this, I don't know, seems to work. Just an idea, innit? Woo! <laughs> Gotta have a bit of spam, aren't you? That'll do for them. down my neck and uh, get some work done. Where else can you work on your car when you get food running around? Oh. So as you can see here, yeah, just mounted the bracket on. Excuse me, I need, uh, need more hands for this. So we're just putting the bolt through now. That goes on through there. Washer on this side, nut on, and we'll poke the cable up through the top. And then we've got the work light. There we go, so that's mounted now. It clears the door. And I've not pulled it up tight, I've got a little grommet in here. You always leave a little bit of a loop, so if any water hits it, it drips off there. Rather than going back up into the fitting or anywhere else, you always leave a drip loop. Let's wire it. So basically all I'm doing now is the cable comes up through the top compartment here. So I've put a couple of crimps on the end of that one. And all I'm doing is extending the cable now to get to the switch panel, which is fused. So we'll get the negative, which I've put a male end on. So we'll get a bit of negative cable here, bear this one back. Female fitting. You could do them both the same, but what, what I tend to do with stuff like this is I'll put a male on one on a pause and female on a neg or something like that that way if I'm rummaging around in the dark and I can't actually see it I can feel it so I know which one's pause which one's neg I don't know if it's the proper way of doing it or not but it works for me there's double crimp these slightly stagger it right so connect that on there when these connections are, are all done and it's working I then go around with a bit of insulating tape around each one of these, which is something I do. Right, so this one wants to be a male. There's, don't ever worry about this. So long as all the connections are good and everything's fused, it's an absolute doddle. It really is. Don't be, don't be scared off from it. I'm putting stuff down and losing it. There we go. There you go. Nice little end on it. And then Bob's your uncle, Connie's your aunt, it's in. That's a nice tight connection. And these now can go straight up here. We'll drop the fuse board panel off. We'll put the positive on the switch output because that's all fused and then we just the negative 
that's just a common negative which goes down to the negative terminal on the battery. You can earth it to the vehicle, but it's a Land Rover. When haven't we got crap earth? So just do it properly the first time. Right, I don't know how well you'll see this because it's the middle of the day, but this is how I've got on so far. I think that should uh, give a bit of light off around the camp. And uh, realign these ones because they were uh, a little low. I had intense light for about 30 metres and then not so much after it. As you can see, it's, it's lighting this wall up. So, yeah, they, they should do for now. So, the next job is I fitted the night heater last weekend. Mm -hmm. Excuse the mess because I'm working in here. So, I fitted it in that cupboard there. So, what I've got is all that duct in. So, it's going to go up through the two cupboards. The idea of that is I can keep clothes and stuff in there and it dries anything out, keeps duvets warm, etc. Um, so, basically, top of that cupboard there, it'll come out. And rather than having vents, because I'm not overly keen on vents, it comes as a giant curtain of air out of the top of that. Uh, that cupboard there, so the convectional current will just bring it down on top of me while I'm asleep. Come a softy like that. If you didn't see it before, these are the lights I fitted on the floor. Uh, as I say, it's uh, still daylight, so we've got the, the main light on. But yeah, these are my pimp lights. One more little bit in it, just tidies it up a little bit. And if I don't know if you can hear that, I'll put you right in the cupboard. That wearing is the start-up sequence of the night heater. I've seen some double-sided tape now, just to attach this on here. This is the control unit. So I can set whatever temperature I want. It's 10 degrees in here at the minute. So we'll give that 10-15 minutes and see what we get up to. Last, uh, last time I was playing with it, I had about 18 to 20 degrees on average. Just a tick over uh, temperature. Which, realistically, I'm, uh, I'm only going to have it around the 10 anyway. Just to take the chill off the air when, on an evening. So, also, because we're all a bunch of uh, sick women lazy, it's nice to have somewhere warm where you can just dive in for 10 15 minutes and just take the, the, the cold off. So, it's getting very, very comfortable in here. Very comfortable. Right, so it's toasty warm in here. I don't know if you can hear it kicking in and out, the night heater's going. So, it is not, it's, it's, it's very cold outside and it's, it's nice in here. So, what I'm doing. I'm just running the cable from the switch panel at the front along this racking on the back of it and I'm going to run that to the back wall there. This will give me the feed for the rear work lights and what I also use for reversing. So that's that's 360 degree lights all the way around this thing now, all separately switched. Um, this rail's coming off but it's okay because the, the cable's going on the inside of these loops because this is all getting boxed off the same material as the kitchen unit. I'm also having some overhead storage with down lighters on that side when I get some spare coin. So yeah, never ending. Oh, mental now. Don't ever put a tent next to my Land Rover. <laughs> right. We've got them two lights fitted, so we're on with these uh, rear ones now. So let's crack on with these. Nice, we've got a little captive nut in there. Got this little block that you can see there's an angle on it which match, matches the angle on here. So we'll just capture that. And now on key that fits. That's as a faff on it. It's got one bite. Watching a monkey with a typewriter. Right, so you've got the option of mounting it wherever, but I'm going to go dead centre, so we'll just nip that up. Don't need it too tight, it's uh, cast alley. So there's little lugs on the side, and we've got four bolts, four washers, and we've already got the bracket on the back of the vehicle. So we'll offer it up to the angle that we want and just tighten them up. So we've already got the bracket on the rear of the vehicle now. That just slides in there, as you can see, you can just adjust from here and we'll just poke his cable through first. I'm going to need two hands for that. We'll drop this on and we'll put the four little bolts in. Right, this is, this is the fiddly bit, so if you've got sausage fingers like me, you may struggle. 
so just getting it in. I've just started the thread by finger so that way I know I'm not cross threading. And just tighten it up. What I'm doing, I'm having one straight back, so when I'm reversing, or if some Muppet comes up behind me with fog lights on, which is one of my pet hates, they get a good zap of this. Uh, and as well as that, I've got one facing a lot more down. Uh, it's a little bit uneven looking, but with them giving a good range, this it, it gives a bit a bigger output of light in a, in all. I think I've had it, I've had them like this before and it works, so I'm going to continue with that. So we'll get these nipped up and I'll bring you to the next stage. Right, so uh, inside, cable here, cable here. Ugly as hell, but all this back end is getting reclad because, as I've said before, the two big ambulance doors are going and we're having one caravan door. So this whole back end will be reclad and redone. So I'm not too worried about the cosmetics for now, as you can tell. Apologies for the low light, but it is what it is. So all done here, this is the feed. Straight through with a pair of uh, females. This is going to go on to the, uh, the end here. So we just need to put a pair of males on here. Like I say, cosmetically, this doesn't make any difference whatsoever because it's all getting reboarded and as and when it gets reboarded, it will also get remade electrically because I've got, I've got plans for the back end of uh, this panel here. normally do a male and a female but so you can see which is which but as it is here I'm doing this for a reason Chickens has been bummed with the uh, sausage kicking off. Going mad with this crimp because it's a very uh, fine bit of cable, and I've doubled it over. But uh, you still want to make sure it gets a good connection, obviously. So brown to brown, blue to blue, brown's pause, blue's neg. Don't uh, trust the little people in the factory that make them. I always check them on just a little arm battery to start with because I have known these come out totally wrong because not the, the whole world doesn't use the same standard of colours. So we'll just crimp them on, we'll get that across the back and get this one and I'll show you where it's at. Right, so what I've done here, I've had one pointing this kind of angle here. This is for further back reversing through the woods and knobheads with fog lights on that follow me. It's one of my pet hates. And then the other one, I've got pointing right down. This is the leading door here. So as you open the door, as you can see, this lights up just where I am. Um, so round this area here, so I think with the, I know it's not very even and it's a bit of a mind bender because the, the different angles, but I can either have them both looking straight down or both looking back. I'd rather have one of each. That way you've got a good mix between the two of them. So you'll have an area there that's lit up and an area back here that's lit up. If anyone's wondering, um, I've got an Instagram page as well, Torn Apart Self Sufficiency. A lot of stuff like last weekend, I really didn't have time to be filming or faffing about, so I put a lot of pictures on there when I'm working on the vehicles or doing odds and ends. It's a lot quicker with the little pictures and 15 second videos. So if you're interested on that, and as well as that, obviously, we've got the Facebook group, Bug Out Vehicles UK. So that's, uh, that's the one I started years ago. I don't know if you get this because GoPro suck balls at night, so it's not fully dark yet, it's dusk. That's the uh, 
light bar on the roof. Let's open the door up. It's a side light. A lot of it's reflected off there though. And let's get the rear one. So we've got the low down one and the one further back. So that was a day well spent on you. Know.